All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to name acids. All right, so there are actually two types of acids. One of them is called a binary acid. Binary acid just means you're going to have a, a hydrogen atom and another non-metal bond with it. So there's only two types of elements in the binary acids. For example, I'll have I could have HBr or I could have HI or I could have HF, or maybe if I write down a couple of other examples, I could have H2S, or I could have H3P, because all they really have is just two different types of uh, uh, non-metals, and obviously one of them has to be the hydrogens, and the other one could be either the halogens, or it could be the sulfur, or the phosphorus, and, and other, other stuff. Okay, so when it comes to naming binary acids, you start with hydro okay so the hydro is going to be the first part of the name and then the other the second part of the name is going to be uh, the base of the element so base of element name or which in this case is going to be um, the non-metal not the hydrogen but the other non-metal like sulfur phosphorus and all that and then it's going to end with ic acid at the end of the day Okay, so hydro, the base of the element, and then ic acid. For example, this HBr, I'm going to start with hydro, and then the base of this bromine is going to be just bromine, but then remember, you're going to replace the last part of it with ic acid. So it's going to be hydro bromic acid. So in this case, the base becomes like brome this, for the bromine. Okay, so then what about HI? What's going to be the name for that? Well, the, the name of the HI, it's in a binary acid, so it's going to be hydro. And then the base of the iodine, so it's going to be ido, and then it's going to be iodic acid. So it's hydroiodic acid. What about HF? HF is going to be hydrofluoric acid. Okay. Then... What about H2S? All right, so there is actually two different names for this. You can also call that hydrogen sulfide, but if it's in a solution form, you can call that in the form of an acid, and it's going to be hydro. So the first part of this binary acid still stays the same, starts with hydro, and then it's in a sulfur, so it's going to be sulfur, and then you're going to replace the last part by ic acid. It's going to be sulfuric acid. All right, it's not a sulfuric acid, it's hydrosulfuric acid. There is a big difference between the hydrosulfuric acid and just the sulfuric acid. And then what about H3P? It's going to be, uh, again, starts out with hydro, and it's going to be phosphoric acid. Okay, so now you may have wondered a little bit, why would I use uh, like one hydrogen for these HBr, HI, and HF, and then I have two hydrogens for H2S, and I got three hydrogens for this uh, um, uh, phosphorus here. So let me make a, make a space here a little bit. So then it, it, also, it all depends on what the charge you have on the anion. Like for example, all these bromine, iodine, and fluorine, when they make ions, uh, they're gonna have uh, the charges of uh, F1 minus or Br1 minus and iodine 1 minus. So if it's a 1 minus charge, you only need one hydrogen to balance out those charges. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, these are guys are going to be called HBr, HI. If you have only one hydrogen in there, they're called monoprotic acids. Okay, all right, so let me just a little bit copy this down here. Okay, so then if I focus on the sulfur, sulfur is actually 2 minus, all right? So since it's 2 minus, if I want to make acid out of it, I would need two hydrogens to balance out the charge because hydrogen would have a 1 plus charge if it's bonding with a non-metal, even though it it's like, you know, it's in a covalent compound, uh, the acids behave a little bit differently. 
So then this particular one is going to be called a diprotic acid. That's because it's got two protons on it or two hydrogens on it. And then when you look at this H3P, what's the charge on phosphorus? Well, if you look in the periodic table, phosphorus is in group 5A. It's going to have a charge 3 minus. So since it has a charge 3 minus, I would need three hydrogens to balance out the 3 minus. So that's going to be a triprotic acid. Okay, so that's your binary acids, and make sure you use hydro, the base of the element, and then it ends with ic acid when you're naming your binary acids. Okay, well, what about your oxy acids? The oxy acids are obviously, as the name specifies, will contain the oxygen, and they're coming from polyatomic anions, actually. And there is a rule in determining how you're going to be naming the oxy acids. Okay, so if your polyatomic anions, all right, comes or ends with eight, all right, so remember phosphate, sulfate, nitrate, and all those guys, if your polyatomic anions ends with eight, then your acids is going to be something like this. You write down the base of the anion, and then it's going to end with ic acid, all right? No hydro used here. Right? I'm just going to speci specify there no hydro used in oxy acids. So make sure you don't use uh, hydro in oxy acids. Okay, if your polyatomic anions uh, ends with ite, all right, it's like nitrite, sulfite, phosphite, then you still write down the base name of the anion, and then it's going to be ending with us acid all right so maybe i can uh, make this a little bit better base name of the anion and then us acid okay let me take a few examples here what if i have in o3 one minus okay so if you guys recall this no3 one minus is called in a nitrate so it ends with eight, okay? Now, if I wanna make acid out of it, how many hydrogens would I need? Well, the criteria still stays the same. If you have one minus charge, you will need only one proton to balance out the charges. So then when I name this, don't call this hydro. That's because it's an oxy acid. So the name for that is gonna be so you still, the base uh, still stays the same. It's going to be NITR, so that's going to be the base of this anion. So it's going to be nitric acid. So for the most part, your eight, in this case, is getting replaced by ic acid. What about something like uh, CO3 to minus? Okay, so CO3 to minus is actually called carbonate. And if I want to make the acid out of it, how many hydrogens would I need? Well, there's two minus charge on it, so I would have H2CO3 there. So that's gonna be called, uh, since it's a carbon, carbonate, so the carbon is the base name for this uh, polyatomic anion, so it's gonna be carbonic acid. Okay, what about something like uh, maybe PO3, three minus? So PO3-3- is called phosphite. All right, so now it's ending with ite. Okay, so then when I make the acid out of it, it's going to be H3PO3 because I need three protons to balance out the 3-. minus. And then what would be the name of this? Well, it since it ends with ite, uh, your first part still stays the same. So it's going to be phosphite phosphorus acid. So it ends with the OUS in that case. Uh, so you have to be a little bit familiar with the base name of these anions and how you're going to be replacing, how you're going to be changing those base names into, into the acid form, whether it's an ic acid or an us acid. Um, so you could be asked, uh, like you could be given something like uh, the name of the acid. Assume I'm talking about this nitrous acid. 
and then you could be asked to figure out what the formula going to be. So then in nitrous acid, as the name specify, it must be coming from nitrite because it has an OUS. And what's the formula for the nitrite? So that's how you're going to be breaking it down. So it's coming from nitrite ion. And I know the nitrite ion is going to be NO2 one minus. And since it's NO2 one minus, the formula of that is going to be HNO2. So initially you can break it down like that, but once you get a hang of it, uh, you will be able to do it directly. Then you don't have to do a, a longer path. Okay, so then in addition to that, you want to make sure you know your six strong acids. Okay, so there is three binary acids that are strong, uh, HCl, HBr, HI, okay? And then there are three oxy acids that are considered to be strong, one of them being HNO3. We talked about that. What's that one called? That one is an nitric acid. And then the other ones are H2SO4. And then the last one is HClO4. Okay, so H2SO4 is called, since it ends with, it has a SO4, SO4 2 minus is called sulfate, so it's going to be called sulfuric acid. All right, so remember what I said earlier, hydrosulfuric acid is told is different than sulfuric acid. Okay, so HClO4, what ClO4 is called? So you go back and look up your polyatomic anion, ClO4 1 minus is called perchlorate. And since it's called in a perchlorate, the acid out of that is going to become perchloric acid. Okay, and then uh, we already know the name for these, but I'll just go and write it down again. So this is going to be hydrochloric acid. All right, these are the binary acids. That's where you use the hydro term. So this is going to be hydrobromic uh, acid. And then this is going to be hydro iotic acid. All right. Uh, these are the six strong acids that you have to memorize when you take a gen chem course. Um, any other acid you see in gen chem is going to be a weak acid. All right. Obviously, when you take organic, then you may have a, a strong organic acids, but these are uh, the inorganic strong acids that you have to really worry about. Okay. So when, like, uh, to just to kind of uh, summarize everything here when you're naming the binary acids you use hydro okay and the base of the element and ends with ic acid and when you're naming the oxy acids you have to kind of be a little bit more careful if your acid ends if your anion ends with eight then the name of your acid is going to end up with ic acid and if your anion ends with ite then the name of the acid will end up with us acid uh, Alright, so hopefully this was helpful and I have some more videos posted with the examples of these uh, polytomic, uh, with these ionic compounds, covalent compounds and the acids.